This is Mac OS Ken. Privacy issues around push notifications, iMessage may dodge a blow in the EU, and find woven feedback from Mac OS Kenizens. Kenonites, maybe? I don't know. It's Thursday, the 7th of December, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Isn't it neat that push notifications can find you whenever and wherever you are? You see, you say it that way and it sounds like a potential privacy problem, doesn't it? And yet, it took a letter from Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, to the Department of Justice to let Apple let the world know that, yeah, push notifications are a potential privacy problem. In a letter that seems to have been penned with a wink and a nudge, Senator Wyden wrote to U.S. Attorney General Eric Garland, urging the DOJ to permit Apple and Google to inform their customers and the general public about demands for smartphone, app, notification records. You mean the badges that let me know that somebody added me on Instagram? The very same. According to Wyden's letter, push notifications are the instant alerts delivered to smartphone users by apps, such as a notification about a new text message or a news update. They aren't sent directly from the app provider to user smartphones. Instead, they pass through a kind of digital post office run by the phone's operating system provider. For iPhones, this service is provided by Apple's push notification service. For Android phones, it's Google's Firebase cloud messaging. These services ensure timely and efficient delivery of notifications, but this also means that Apple and Google serve as intermediaries in the transmission process. And that is info that various governments might find useful. According to a piece on the letter from TechCrunch, a secret source tells Reuters that government agencies have asked both Apple and Google for metadata from push notifications, including information that ties pseudonymous app users to specific Apple or Google accounts. So using a fake name on that communications app could still lead authorities to a user's true name, if push notifications for the app are active. Wyden says his office got a tip in the spring of 2022 that government agencies in foreign countries were demanding smartphone push notification records from Google and Apple. Wyden's staff has been looking into the issue since then, including asking Google and Apple for more information. In response to that query, says the letter, the company's told Wyden's staff that information about this practice is restricted from public release by the government. I'm sorry, which government? Yeah, I left that part out of the tech crunch thing. The Reuters source says foreign and U.S. government agencies have asked for this information. But seriously, Apple and Google, you can't tell anybody. Now that the cat's out of the bag, though, Apple and Google have gotten a bit chatty. Apple tells TechCrunch that its hands were tied, or its mouth was gagged. In an email to the site, Apple spokesperson Shane Bauer said, Apple is committed to transparency, and we have long been a supporter of efforts to ensure that providers are able to disclose as much information as possible to their users. In this case, the federal government prohibited us from sharing any information, and now that this method has become public... We are updating our transparency reporting to detail these kinds of requests. So, we weren't allowed to say anything, but now that somebody has said exactly what we should be allowed to say, we can go ahead and say it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say some more, say some more. I can't help thinking that Apple and Google could have done something about this before now, Maybe constructed a different system, or perhaps killed push notifications for a day or two, prompting questions as to why. Whatever the case, they're doing something now.
confirming the accusations in the Wyden letter and, according to a piece from Ars Technica, Apple has updated its transparency reporting and will detail these kinds of requests in a separate section on push notifications in its next report. While Wyden's public demand that Apple and Google should be allowed to talk about this seems to have been enough for the companies to do so, the senator would still like to see that codified. Quoting his letter again, These companies should be permitted to generally reveal whether they have been compelled to facilitate the surveillance practice, to publish aggregate statistics about the number of demands they receive, and, unless temporarily gagged by a court, to notify specific customers about demands for their data. Wyden asked that the DOJ repeal or modify any policies that impede this transparency in the letter. Apple may be able to duck one of the many punches thrown at it in the EU. According to a piece from Bloomberg, it looks like antitrust regulators in the European Union will go along with the Cupertino company and agree that iMessage is not big enough to be labeled gatekeeper. According to the report, officials within the European Commission have tentatively concluded that iMessage isn't popular enough with business users to warrant being hit by the regulation. Quoting Bloomberg, if iMessage ended up being targeted by the Digital Markets Act, Apple would have faced potentially onerous obligations to make iMessage work with rival online messaging services such as Meta's WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, a move that Apple has already strongly contested. It sounds like those arguments may have worked, though it will be a bit before we know for sure. The five-month market investigation that will decide the issue does not end until February. Remember that TDK plant I told you about earlier this week? News came via Fortune India that Japanese firm TDK is building a plant in the north part of India. That plant will make cells for batteries to be used in iPhones made on the subcontinent. Now a piece from the Financial Times indicates that that plant is part of a bigger battery thing. It's all secret people said to know something about something, of course. According to the report, two people close to Apple say the company has told component suppliers that it would prefer to source batteries for next year's iPhone 16 from factories in India. The report says battery manufacturers such as Desai of China have been encouraged to establish new factories in India, while Simplo Technology, a Taiwanese battery supplier for Apple, has been asked to scale up production in India for future orders, said three people familiar with the situation. Those facilities will apparently be fed by the TDK plant, or plants like it. The Financial Times says firms such as Desai and Simplo package the cells manufactured by the likes of TDK. It looks like more of Apple's individual media stores are on the way out. A piece from 9 to 5 Max says Apple will discontinue the standalone iTunes movie and iTunes TV shows apps on the Apple TV box, starting with tvOS 17.2. The piece says a message has started turning up in this week's tvOS release candidate, reading, iTunes movies and your purchases have moved. You can buy or rent movies and find your purchases in the Apple TV app. That message is accompanied by two buttons, one saying, go to the store, and another saying, go to your purchases. What does all this mean for iPhone and iPad? Well, nothing yet, though. Sure seems like the writing is on the wall. At least as of time of publishing, says the 9 to 5 Mac piece, the iTunes Store app on the iPhone and iPad is still functional as far as movie and TV show purchasing is concerned. However, it is possible that Apple migrates users away from that app to TV as well. The promo machine is ramping up for an upcoming Apple TV Plus series. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release Wednesday reintroducing the World War II drama Masters of the Air and floating a new trailer. First trailer was better, just saying. Focusing on the folks who flew against the Nazis in World War II, 
The first two of nine episodes hit Apple TV Plus on Friday, the 26th of January. The rest will follow on following Fridays, culminating with the final episode on the 15th of March. You can catch the latest trailer now on YouTube. Apple's got another store opening plan for this year. Seriously, just in time for the holidays. A piece from Apple Insider says Apple Burkdale Village in Huntersville, North Carolina will open one week from today, Thursday, the 14th of December. The new location is about eight miles away from the store Apple closed earlier this year at North Lake Mall in Charlotte, North Carolina. Seems that one had a bit more gunplay than Apple was comfortable with. The new store was originally set to open in early 2024, according to the report. You know, right after the busiest shopping season of the year. And now's probably better. Speaking of shopping, if you're thinking of picking up a fine woven case for your iPhone, at least a few Mac OS Ken listeners think that would be a fine idea. Last week, I asked who had one and what they thought of it. You know, now that the dust has settled around the material's introduction. Most of the responses were positive, though we'll start with a couple that are sort of on the fence. Not sure whether Warren likes or liked his fine woven case, but his story is an interesting one. I took my sort of worn out green fine woven case to Apple and showed them the carnage, and they gave me a brand new one. I had the new one on for a bit, but got a non-Apple clear case for Black Friday, which is my daily driver for now. Jeff wrote in saying, I got a blue fine woven case with my iPhone back in early October, and I have been using it all the time. The case has started to fade where it comes into contact with my hand when holding it. A couple of scratches, some fading along the edges. If it was a leather case, we'd probably call that distressed and market it as a feature but I'll probably replace it sooner than I would if it were a leather case. Skewing more to the positive, Marshall says, my spouse and I got a new iPhone 15 Pro more than two months ago with the fine woven cases, mainly because leather was not an option. I got blue, she got brown. So far they are holding up very well. I know people have complained about scratches, but that has not been an issue for us. We are very happy with the cases. Michael wrote in saying he got two iPhone 15 Pros this year, one for work, one personal. He got fine woven cases for each, one Pacific Blue, one Evergreen, and he loves them. The touch, feel, and materials feel great, he says. I don't have all the same complaints that content creators on YouTube and Many, most, almost all online reviews I've read seem to have. Only a few. Cases are too expensive, yes. Marketed as a one-for-one leather replacement is also not a fair comparison. I can also see how marks and scratches could leave long-term blemishes, but even the couple of scuffs on my fine woven cases have slowly disappeared. Overall, though, I really like everything about the case, especially the touch and feel of the buttons. Perhaps my experience is an outlier, he says, but so far the fine woven case has been a solid case for me on two phones. We'll leave the last word with a guy who does words, Richard Gunther from the podcasts Home On and Entertainment 2.0. He says, personally, I think the initial hate thrown at the fine woven products was misplaced. I bought the blue case for my partner and the MagSafe wallet for me. We like them both, and they're holding up just as well as any leather product might as it sees use. If I remember correctly, he says, one of the major outlets smeared the fine woven products because dragging a fingernail along the surface permanently marked the accessory. I don't know about you, but I don't intentionally mar the surface of leather products I purchase. Why? because I know my fingernail might leave a permanent mark. What exactly were people expecting? A leather-like product with surface resilience properties of hard metals? Yeah, dude does words. 
Thanks to everybody who wrote in. It goes without saying, but say it I will. You rock. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.